Hello my dear students, oh, welcome to this uh, anti-histamine series and in part 2 we are seeing the introduction of H1 receptor antagonist. So as I discussed with you in the last lecture that uh, this histamine is released from mast cell and this mast cell is located in skin as well as in respiratory tract. So in what condition the release of histamine becomes allergic? So you know, the, you know we rule that whenever there is any kind of physical or uh, skin damage, there is a release of histamine. It is normal response. If some uh, dust particle intrude into the respiratory tract, and that dust particle uh, causes antigen antibody reaction, and in this way, from respiratory tract, if there is a release of histamine that causes sneezing and coughing, that is a normal response. Both are normal response. Okay, but actually, what happened in allergy? So in allergic condition, okay your mast cell is getting hypersensitized i'm repeating again your mast cell is getting hypersensitized and because of that one okay even if there is small uh, uh, skin injury or there is some uh, uh, a small dust particle enters there is abundant amount of uh, uh, large amount of histamine is getting released okay whether it is in respiratory tract or whether it is in skin and that causes the skin allergy and that also causes the uh, respiratory tract allergy and that uh, and because of respiratory tract allergy person is suffering from multiple times sneezing and coughing so if you want to block this allergic effect what we have to do we have to block the binding of histamine and this histamine is released from mast cell and this histamine is binding with h1 receptor and binding of this histamine to the h1 receptor this h1 receptor it, it is inducing uh, uh, allergic responses uh, like uh, it is increasing it is causing vasodilation it is inducing inflammation it is uh, also inducing allergic response and if you want to block this all allergic responses we have to block the binding of histamine to the histamic receptor and hence in today's le lecture we are seeing h1 receptor antagonist and both in uh, skin and respiratory tract this histamine is binding with h1 receptor okay and hence uh, today's our lecture is focusing on h1 receptor antagonist so far a uh, three generation of drugs were discovered first generation second generation and third generation which are blocking the histamine receptor so this is histamine receptor assume that so what is generation this may be the question generation matlab pehle drugs hai and they may have some sort of a side effect okay or unwanted effect and that effect has been minimized with the new drugs jo bhi naye drugs hai that is called second generation and second generation may be having some sort of problem and what are the problems associated with second generation if it is resolved by in chemical modification in second generation and whatever the new drug we uh, got is no uh, are known as third generation okay here i'll simplify with example for example first generation jo anti histamine side the which is blocking to the h1 receptor is uh, diphenhydramine aur aaj hum tino use karte hain still it doesn't mean that first generation second generation we are not using it is not like that so what are the curb syrup you will find they contain the diphenhydramine and bromodiphenhydramine as well as chloramphenicillin isn't it okay so whether it is diphenhydramine bromodiphenhydramine or chloramphenicillin it belongs to the first generation and one of the major drawback of first generation is that they are inducing the sedation and hence on curb syrup you'll find such kind of uh, instruction don't take this medicine or syrup while driving and driving it may induce the sedation isn't it so later people they did a chemical modification in first generation and that leads to the second generation so what are the advantage of second generation so what are the disadvantage of first it has been overcome by the second generation and this advantage of first generation was sedation and hence what are the second generation drugs which came later for example cetirizine it is uh, i cannot say they are not they don't have any kind of uh, sedating effect but they have lower sedating effect okay if you took a diphenhydramine and if you if you took uh, if you take uh, diphenhydramine if you take cetirizine you'll find that cetirizine having a less sedating effect sedative effect as compared to the diphenhydramine so in this way second generation molecules came into the market but this <coughs> other specialty of second generation drug is that they exist in racemic form it is racemic form means it is a mixture of dextro and levo okay 
or I can say that RNAs or I can say that dextro and levo. Okay. So people what latter did they specifically isolate only one form which is responsible for binding with antihistamine receptor. Take the example of cetirizine. Cetirizine it exists in both the form that is dextro and levo. But the levo form is mainly responsible for binding with histaminic receptor. Okay. And hence later people specifically isolate the levo form from the racemic mixture. And hence for separation of this uh, uh, levo form from racemic mixture it cost more amount. And hence the price of levo cetirizine is a little bit higher as compared to the plain cetirizine. Okay. And the one of the what are, what are the advantage third generation? They are more a specific drug and they have again less sedating power as compared to the second generation drug. So I hope that you understand how first generation drugs came into the market, how they have been replaced by second generation and currently a uh, doctor used to prescribe the third generation drug that is a levocetrazine. So I hope that you understood uh, this all three generation drugs. And if you have still any kind of a doubt in your mind, please feel free to ask me. I'll, uh, I'll answer to your comments. Thank you.